Welcome to Surgeon Syndicate. If you're paying attention, you know that you only make money when you work. It might be great money, but it's dependent on you. The information on this podcast will help you solve that. We interview experts and provide analysis into financial freedom through commercial real estate. Why? To help physicians like you thrive. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to the Surgeon Syndicate. Today's show, we're going to talk about what's up in retail. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I've been watching a bunch of webinars looking for the state of the market in retail right now and trying to to get a little bit of guidance of what to expect going forward. And it's so funny as I read a bunch of articles, there's a lot of things that are out there that are still being said that aren't really true. Um, I, I still read things where they talk about the fall or the downfall of the mall and about retail being in trouble because of, uh, or brick and mortar retail being in trouble because of online shopping. Um, and that may have been the case a few years ago, but this has not held on. And because of that, We've uh, got a situation that is really pushing in favor of retail commercial space. So what happened is, as online shopping built and people started buying more and more on online, it did affect retail. It affected the big malls. Uh, it affected the entire industry. And when that happened, new construction stopped or slowed completely. And so over the last 10 to 15 years, there's been a shortage of new retail being built. And there's been close to as much retail going out of commission and not being replaced. So almost in some areas, there has been a negative or a drawback in the amount of retail space that's available. And so current retail vacancy rates are at a multi-year low, meaning there's not a lot of space available. And so demand is high. Now, there's a lot of other really interesting things that, I've, that I saw as I was digging into this um, that is new to the whole thing. One cool one is the retail media network. And this is a way that uh, stores are now using their brick and mortar uh, locations more like this, the store more like a platform as you would think of an online platform from selling. And is what that is is they they're using all of their assets, their uh, their apps and their web channels, but also within the store as a place to sell advertising to the companies who pro whose products they sell. This is good for the stores because it's another uh, another source of revenue. And this is good for the products that they're selling have been really interested in this because it's advertising close to the point of sale and close to the, close to the decision point of decision making of motivated buyers. This means they're getting their word out to somebody who's thinking about buying something and they're right there ready to do it rather when they're sitting on the couch reading the uh, Alice said reading the newspaper or looking at something online. They're actually in the store when they're seeing these things. Uh, the other thing they're starting to see is advertising for stores in the same complex because there's data out there from sources like Placer AI that show increased cross-visitation, uh, so, meaning that customers tend to visit multiple stores in the same complex, um, and so they want to. So they're so one may be looking to advertise in the other uh, because they've already got the customer right there. It's a great place to grab their attention, um, and so this also gives a place to right when somebody's at the store or close by to create impressions of their brands. Um, and the products that they're selling. So the other part of this uh, that's going on in retail and seeing it within the big malls and within smaller strip centers is looking at 
independent diversity. These aren't just retail stores. And if you think back to like the 1980s, it seemed like the bulk of things that were at the mall or, or in, in, even in strip centers, there was a lot of apparel. And so you had multiple stores competing for people who were going clothes shopping. So we're seeing less of that and not just a decrease in the concentration of apparel stores, but uh, it's not just retail. So within retails, traditionally retail spaces, we're seeing co-working spaces because people are working from home and not wanting to be at home, but looking to find office space close to home. Medical facilities are now being used. Uh, doctors' offices and, and even health centers are starting to see that smaller offices close to where people are going have been very popular. Uh, you're seeing a mix of restaurants and fast food mixed in with uh, retail spaces. And what this is doing is it's driving a symbiosis rather than a competition so that people come to one store and they end up shopping at, at multiple stores. And what they're seeing overall in these centers is that there are more people at the retail centers over a longer period of time where it used to be at the mall, there were a lot of people there at night, uh, you know, shopping at night on the weekends, on holidays, but there were other large amounts of time when nobody was there shopping. So this is being, uh, you know, the retail industry is figuring out how to use these spaces and be symbiotic with the other stores to drive more customers into the area uh, and be there shopping at a, at a greater period of time. The second thing here is a change in the format of shops and shops in shops. So what are shops and shops? It's like the Disney store within Target. And there's now data that uh, these are some of Target's top performing stores are the ones with the Disney store inside. So obviously again here, we're seeing this, uh, this symbiosis. And also for somebody like Target, they're making rent back because they're renting this space to, of the store in the store. So it drives their revenue too. Um, and the other, the other change we're seeing is smaller stores. So a lot of retailers that used to want really big stores with everything are trying to better uh, focus on their market demographic for that particular store and have a smaller store. They pay a per square foot rent. So if they can do the same sales out of a smaller store, that's going to drive their profits and is going to be good for them. So as uh, real estate investors and in this uh, retail space, part of why this is important is if her store sales are going up and all your tenants are thriving, this can drive rents up. But it also means that whoever's owning and operating these centers are putting more time and energy into thinking about who they want in the center so that that uh, can have that symbiosis and drive up the profitability of all your tenants, which also allows you to increase the rents and so everybody's winning. So the last part of this is talking again about the mall. And I don't know if anybody else has noticed, it wasn't that long ago where it seemed like the mall was dying. Malls had lots of empty spaces, lots of empty stores. And now availability in mall space has decreased dramatically and is actually becoming a premium. And part of that is they've rethought the design of the mall and they've thought about who they want in there. Um, I've seen malls now that that have leased office space to some larger employers, which puts all these people there next to their retail space. So it's it's good on both sides. You also see the the fitness uh, gyms are now liking to be in that old mall space. Lots of parking. And also is this traffic back and forth between stores. Uh, and part of what's happening now is there's say what they call the rise of the B mall. So it used to be this big competition to be the best mall in town and everybody went to that mall and the other mall lost. 
Well, now not everybody's wanting to drive all the way across the town, and there may still be a premier mall, but these secondary malls are really seeing some growth uh, and improvement of a place, especially as a place for something to own as a real estate investor. But they're also, if you notice, the outlots on the outside of the parking lot is now they're placing other stores and there's a lot of new building, a lot of fast food, uh, coffee shops like Starbucks, dental offices that are now being, being built close to the street uh, in what was the mall parking lot. So this whole retail space right now has been through some dark times. Uh, we're coming off the bottom and it's a really exciting place going forward over the next several years. So we'll talk about this more, but this is one of the one of the things I'm most excited about here and investing in here in the near future is retail space. So thanks for joining us. It's been great having you here. We look forward to having you back on Surgeon Syndicate. This has been an episode of Surgeon Syndicate. If you got value from this episode, you know other surgeons are hungry to become job optional and you can help them by sharing this content today. Schedule a call and we can make a plan. Looking forward to having you with me on the next episode.